Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at something very cool. This is a Weiler lifeguard and um, I pretty much got this baby for myself. As you can see, I have glued a uh, Rolex opening tool on the back because this uh, case back is very, very tightly um, shut onto the case. So hopefully this will be enough to uh, loosen the case back and get the case back off. Here you can see the um, the Weiler sign on the uh, shield on the back, waterproof, well, water resistant maybe one time, two fishies to uh, indicate that it can go in the water, and the uh, the Weiler Weiler Flex balance wheel, which is um, the unique feature on these uh, Weiler watches. So this one has something very unusual and uh, dare I say cool and uh, if you see the luminous compound is covered in something white and furry. Um, I'm going to put this under the microscope and uh, see if you can get a, or I'll add a photo here you can get a closer look at that and then we're going to look at it as we take it out of the case. I suspect that is uh, minerals that have leached out of the luminous compound due to some moisture or something and um, yeah, it looks like miniature crystals. Well, we'll have a closer look as I take it out of the case as well. So we've got to line this up, put that into the groove, like so. Get tension. This is the lever. Hopefully, this will open up. Bloody hell. There we go. Oh man, that was tight. That's it. That did the trick. There's no way you could get that uh, case back opened in any more efficient way than that. See, it even broke off. Even broke off the glue. Which doesn't matter because uh, now the case back is loose. Wow, that is uh, that was on this strong. Let's get this over here and we'll have a closer look. There we go. Ooh, a nice ETA. So of course you have the Weiler balance wheel here which uh, you also saw on the case pack logo. So um, this will have, uh, that one, one, the idea is that you uh, remove the weight of the actual balance wheel when it has a shock. Um, so there should be less uh, of a shock going to the, um, uh, going to the balance wheel uh, pivots. And here you also have a shock protection on top. So it's kind of a double shock protection. The movement is in fantastic condition. I can already tell. Just by looking in here, it's a bit of dirt and whatnot to be expected. Uh, I doubt this watch has been opened in a long time. Let's have a look in the case back. There is no um, service marks as I can see. So this watch might have never been serviced before as well. Um, so cool. Let's line the hands up and let's get this uh, movement out of the case. I quite like the wireless from this time period. Uh, their cases are of uh, good quality and uh, they use nice ETAs. And of course with the uh, modified uh, balance wheels, it makes them a bit different. So a uh, very cool brand to uh, look out for and collect if uh, you want something a little bit unusual. And they're reasonably uh, inexpensive compared to uh, some other brands out there, compared to how cool they are. I think they've very got a lot of nice designs. Um, yeah, no, I think they're, they're good watches. So 
So you can see my very luminous compound. I put that under the microscope. I'm just going to remove the hands. You can also see the uh, blue coloring has, um, it used to be on the dials come off, but all the lettering is still there. So um, there's been some kind of chemical reaction or I don't know, is it the um, radiation burning it off from the uh, hands and um, loom on the dial? Real chunky markers on this, very, very nice. Okay, well, let's right, I'm gonna put it under the microscope, have a closer look. Well, safe to say that is uh, very, very strange. There's none on the compound here. So um, obviously these three are the main culprits where something's going on. It's very cool, but I'm afraid I'll have to remove the crystals as it's cool in the, uh, under a microscope, but um, it just looks fuzzy <laughs> when you don't have a microscope. So, um, yeah, but um, very unusual situation we have. They're very, very, very delicate. They're super thin, but also very hard. So, please leave a comment on uh, what you could uh, think it is and what's caused it. I suspect it's uh, crystal leaching from the mineral used in the compound, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. Talked to my friend Bill, he's seen it once before on the watch. That was a Suma. It also had the uh, burnt dial effect. So, um, yeah, it's a um, bit of an unusual thing you don't see every day. So, well, I'm going to take the dial off now. And then I'm going to take the movement apart. I'm going to do that in... Um, in time lapse, because uh, it will be pretty much the same process as putting the movement back together again, uh, but we'll do that in real time. So, um, yeah. Okay, movement has been thoroughly cleaned and I have fitted the uh, shop protecting jewels. You can see they're a little bit different than your average Inca shop. Um, so as discussed earlier, you have this funky balance, which is a little bit flex. It has flex in the um, post themselves. So that's the idea is that the weight of the balance wheel um, will be deflected by flex uh, going into the pivot preventing the pivots from breaking if you have a strong shock so in this case you actually have a double protection that you have the flex in the balance itself uh, balance wheel i mean and that you have the shock protection jewels that can uh, move in um, according to the shock direction so um, yeah probably uh, an efficient system I'm not going to test it um, but uh, they were very proud of it uh, when it came out so initially that uh, while I kind of did this when uh, shock protection was in its infancy so most of them they um, you'll find them without any shock protection in the middle but this has a uh, double up because it's a bit later model
I quite like Byla. I think they're cool watches. They have a lot of cool um, skin divers um, and dive watches. That's uh, no, they have a good vibe to them. You can see the underside of that uh, funky balance wheel. So now, um, I guess I'll just get going at uh, putting this uh, gear train back in. So as you might have, uh, well, thought we would just, this is a few days after I took it apart, so I don't know what I said in the first part of the video, but I might repeat myself in a few things, but uh, we have an ETA base movement. Um, which has got a nice um, plating to it, kind of a um, rose brass plating. Um, so it's an ETA to 2472 um, with the specialized viola balance. A nice thing with this movement is that it is the full, fully jeweled version. So um, I'll show you a funny detail in a second. First of all, I'm going to put a drop of oil in where the pivots go. There's the balance wheel, which has uh, not the balance wheel, the barrel. There we go, didn't get confused. The barrel and you have the uh, the second wheel but the third wheel will come in here and the third wheel will also drive uh, and connect with the um, minute and hour hand so that goes underneath here so unlike in a trad traditional movement where you have a center wheel where the uh, post goes down and um, drives the uh, cannon pinion uh, they, it's, it's a different instruction. We'll look at the clutch when we turn the movement around later. <clears throat> so this has a uh, the um, let's have a look. Sorry, I'm a bit, uh, yeah. You can see here's where the crown wheel comes in. Crown wheel. It's a little bit special. So I've got more bits. So the crown wheel comes on top here, but it's secured by this lever that goes on the underside. So I'll put a little bit of lubricant in here because this is going to wag back and forth. in there. Just a little bit of wear on the plate. That's okay, we can live with that. Just a little bit of lubrication in there. To reduce the friction in the future. Then we have our actual crown wheel comes on top here. on the upper pivot here. We'll put a little drop it here as well. Now we can fit the um, barrel bridge.
Okay, I almost made a mistake. Make sure I don't do that. Let's take the power bridge off again and fit the setting lever screw. Doing ETAs, you're used to the uh, more modern version of it. They don't have a setting lever screw, so um, it's good to remember that, otherwise I'll have to take it apart later on. I quite like putting a little droplet of lubrication on the side or the friction side of the setting lever screw because if there's any moisture in the future that will help that not corrode um, around the setting and winding mechanism and you really want to be able to disengage that um, and that can be a problem if that um, the surface rust is in, rusts in there. There we go. This movement is in exceptionally nice condition. You can see there's not a lot of scratches or marks on it and uh, most of the screw heads are pristine. I just look to have been open and closed once. everything in place where it should be so far. Next I can fit the uh, gear train. Have the third wheel and the sweep second wheel. So this I'm going to give a little droplet of oil. About in the right order. So that's the third wheel. Then the sweep second wheel, fourth wheel. And next the escape wheel. It's in there. And of course now it's time for the um, for the um, bridge itself, gear train bridge. Uh, just to be safe, I'm going to look at this under the microscope, make sure all my pivots line up. So I don't know if you noticed it, but there was a tiny bit of crud on uh, in a couple of the jewel holes here. So I've pegged with, pegged with them and cleaned them out. So that's good now. So what I wanted to point out, which is quite cool, is that here you can see it says 17 jewels. That is of course not right because this is a full 25 joule movement and um, if you're Weiler and you've already ordered this plate, what do you do? Well, you machine it down and you make yourself a little cover plate. Very nice, 25 joules, there you go. Upgrade. So now we've gone from a uh, cheap 20, 17 joule movement to the exclusive 25 joules. So that's pretty cool, a bit unusual, um, creative, I would say. So, um, but um, yeah, now for the crown 
Oh, for the, uh, well, what would be the ratchet wheel, I guess. In this case, the crown wheel is the ratchet wheel because it has the ratchet. But, um, well, I'll call it the intermediate power delivery wheel then. Or whatever you would uh, name it. Please comment if you have any better suggestions. Uh, got the screw for it. You'll also see when I tighten this that we have a free moving gear train, which is somewhat uh, essential. Now what I'm going to do is oil this under the microscope and as you might have seen in some other videos what you want to do is not over oil it and not under oil it you just want like um, maybe two thirds uh, in the cup with oil one third unoiled and um, yeah just a nice way of doing it you don't want the oil to uh, smear and uh, go all the place and um, that, uh, that's the plan anyway. So um, I'm going to oil it, flip the movement around, start putting the setting and winding mechanism together and also the date. So we also have this uh, lower cap tool for the escape wheel. Might as well fit that. It'll be quite interesting. Uh, it will be quite interesting to see how this movement performs with their custom balance, if they have a good idiosyncrasy or not. Um, the gear train is in fairly good condition. One pivot had a tiny bit of uh, rust buildup in the oil, I think, when that dried out. But besides that, it's uh, very clean. I did clean that pivot up, and uh, the surface was acceptable. Look. There's the starting pinion. There's the winding pinion. So the idea of the sliding pinion is that you have a yoke lever that goes back and forth and uh, it winds on the one side and it will set the time on the other side. So the trick here is any sliding surface will get a little bit of blue grease that um, yeah, will prevent wear from happening. So we don't have to fit the yoke lever yet. I do have to fit the, uh, that's the winding pinion. So the winding pinion has these uh, teeth that come out and engage with the sliding pinion. And of course, when that is uh, there engaged, that will uh, wind the movement because these teeth engage with the crown, crown wheel on the other side. Um, to do that, we will have to have we got to put our stem in. Here's the stem, and the stem has this square. And what happens is that this square will um, engage with the square inside the inside uh, the um, sliding pinion. So this will turn around. There is a round hole in the winding in the um, winding pinion. So if this is here and turning around, this will just keep, this won't, this won't wind because it's a round hole and it will just go around. But uh, what will wind it is the teeth engaging and this will of course turn and turn this wheel as well. So what I wanna do again is get some grease on the On these sliding surfaces, um, you don't want that to, well, it's kind of a rust protection as well, in case you get a tiny bit of moisture or something, you don't want anything to seize and rust together. Helps with that, and of course, it uh, reduces the friction when um, the parts are moving up against each other. So 
in. That's the um, stem in. Now for the uh, setting lever. The setting lever's job is to hold the uh, winding stem in place and uh, help push the yoke uh, lever when you um, disengage. Well, you when you engage the uh, setting mechanism, you can see there's a little uh, pin on the underside here. This is what um, engages with the stem. So we're going to screw that into place. So we'll turn the movement around. That little screw I talked about earlier, the setting lever screw. I need that to engage with the setting lever thread, of course, or the setting lever, yeah. And tighten that. that's in place where it should be. You kind of have to take the movement out, hold it in place and screw it in from the top. Here's the yoke lever that comes in here, engages into the sliding pinion. Let's put a little bit of grease here. So if we go through the steps of engagement, well I'll Grab the crown. Right now there's there's going to be a spring here where we can put the spring in. This is the yoke spring. So the yoke spring will naturally push the yoke up against the winding pinion. And to engage the the time setting, you pull. Oh, this isn't quite in place, so bad demonstration, I must say. But the idea is you pull the um, stem out, and the little um, pin here that's engaged with the stem will force this lever to go outwards, away from the movement. Uh, but that will do that this um, surface here will engage with the yoke that will then go up like so and then you can see that the uh, winding pinion does not engage while you do that so you're not winding the movement while you're setting it and uh, it will uh, engage with the intermediate um, winding wheels to hold that all in place while you're doing it we do have a setting lever spring comes in So your setting lever spring, put a little bit of lubricant on the sliding surface. When you set the, uh, first of all, it holds everything in place. For example, your yoke spring and your yoke. Number two, it uh, because of this uh, spring here and this um, little notch, you can notch it into winding position and you can notch it into setting position. So when the intermediate wheel comes in, of course, that will drive the um, setting wheels. So uh, another thing, it won't move out of position. So there you go, that's how that works. Anyway, let's uh, get on with it and uh, let's see what's the next thing to do. Well, this movement has a quite a special, it has quite a special, um, date change mechanism. It's very snappy. Um, so I just need two seconds to wrap my brain around it and uh, I'll get this in place. So the snappy date mechanism uh, works in the way which makes it a little bit fiddly to put in place, but we'll do our best. So we have a touching surface here, which I'm going to grease up. I'm going to put some grease 
some here because it's gonna touch the spring. And so this again where it's gonna to touch uh, here. Increase that up a little bit extra. Like so. Right, the spring comes in here. The tricky part is that this cage is in here. And the spring should come in around the back gauge. Oops. Yeah, let me do this under the microscope and I'll be right back with you. So yes, this is where we want to be. This goes uh, into a little hook there and goes into a groove, comes around. Almost hard to see this with your eyes. And this will come in here. And we have to position like so. And we get the joy of tensioning the spring there. Actually quite easy when you know how to do it. There you go. I was just a little bit forgetful. Easy peasy. Now you've got a lot of tension in this um, when you're going to snap the date. So we'll look at that a bit later. Anyway, the next thing we can put in is the the um, pinion wheel. So what I'm going to do is I like to give them grease on the back rather than oil because it's kind of an open little notch here. A little bit of grease in there. Do that under the microscope as well. I'll give it a little blotch. Let's see what I'm doing. So I've got a couple of blotches of grease that will um, that will help this turn. So basically. And turn the wheel around and set the time without it um, damaging the gear train. So that's basically a clutch wheel here. So this uh, brass wheel will turn around. This uh, brass wheel going around, you can gauge, gauge with the clutch, gauges with the third wheel in here driving the um, minute and um, hour hand. However, I want to add a droplet of oil to the pillar to make sure we don't have any problems in the future. So I'm going to put some more oil on the pillars here where the wheels go on to. Get that wrong. Get that on the side, not the top. There we go. And here. Intermediate hour wheel. For the date, we have a uh, 
a little tension lever that holds the date in the right position. We're going to get the date wheel here in a second. Checking that, make sure there's no dust. Of course, that does not go in a cleaning machine because I don't want to risk any of the numbers coming off. So I usually go over that with Rodico. Make sure it's fairly clean. So you can see the notches in the date wheel here. And that's, um, make sure that engages inside here. You see those little teeth. If you don't do that, we're going to squeeze it. And here's the little lever that makes sure it goes into the right position when the date changes and stays there and doesn't move around. also have a spring tension stat lever comes in here here we've got a little plate that helps uh, keep the date wheel in place and the spring and lever tiny little screws Oh, that can happen. It all pinged off, pinged away. Luckily, uh, I got the spring and I got the lever. That didn't go anywhere. A bit clumsy, let's try and do this correctly. Just some days you're a bit blinder than others. It's just like you struggle to get the parts into the correct position. Oh. Okay, let me do this under the microscope. I'm just fiddling around and then I'm going to secure the screw here. I need to find it because that pinged off. Here we go, movie magic in place. Um, of course, you can see we have the other side. We're going to have a little uh, bridge coming on there as well to make sure the wheels are held in place. We got the intermediate setting pinion goes in here. See it's notched on one side and the notched side is the engaging side with the sliding pinion. So that goes in like that in most cases. Sometimes they're straight cut, but if they are if they have a bevel, that's what I'm trying to say, not notch, but a bevel on one side, the bevel side engages with the sliding pinion. Put the bridge in. screw first. Like so. The second screw. There we go, just to set the time, like so. Let's um, wind the movement around, nothing's gonna happen, but if we put the hour wheel in, we're not going to have it in now because it will just fall out uh, if you don't have the dial in place. I'm gonna put the hour wheel in. It's nice how they've made the dial washers integrated part of the hour wheel. See, turn that around, you can see the and start building out pressure here. Yep, 
There you go, it's moving and snap. Super snappy. Very nice day change on this. Let's try that again. It's just a little, uh, you see there's a little, um, there's a little um, finger in there that uh, pulls this internal lever upwards and then when it comes to the end where it releases you get this strong spring on the other side and it snaps to date very nicely. I'm going to give that a tiny bit of grease on the You can see I added a photo of it just before it snaps and there you go, very nice. I, I do like this date mechanism when it works as it should be and you don't have any wear on your date wheel teeth. So, um, good stuff. Let's pop this around. Um, it's time for the pallet fork and pallet will be to be secured with the pallet fork bridge. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pop this uh, pallet, pallet fork bridge on. See how nice condition is it. So usually you find pallet fork bridges are full of scratches and uh, where people have been having fun before. This one is uh, perfect. And before I tighten this screw, I'm gonna make sure the pivot is in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to secure this, wind the movement, and I'm going to oil the pallet fork jewels and disperse uh, oil around on the escape wheel. So, now that the uh, pallet has been put in place and oiled, it's time to put the balance in place. Let's have a look, there we go. Important to get the pin so it engages with the pallet fork, otherwise it won't work. Oh, psychedelic balance wheel. Look into the balance wheel. Listen to the command of my voice. You do now feel compelled to go to midka.co.uk and buy lots of watches. Ooh. I don't think that's going to work, but let a try. So the driest humor on YouTube can be found here. There you go. It's pretty cool. Now let's put it on the time graph and see what, what it does. Well, got a bit of a beat error, and uh, we have uh, some adjustment to do. But uh, roll, the amplitude is promising. Um, let's see if we do the adjustment here. First of all, we go to adjust the beat error. Luckily, this is adjusted on the balance. So, let's see, we do that live. Seven and drop down, I think. Okay, got the beat error down. To adjust the timekeeping. In case you're wondering, we do have um, here. So I'm adjusting the uh, the uh, length of the hairspring here and the position of the hairspring here. 
So a little bit of adjustment later. I'm quite happy with that. Plus six seconds a day. Let's dial down to 87 amplitude. And let's flip it around, dial up. Plus six seconds a day. It's not plus 14, that's just a little error that's going to even out. 78. Plus five seconds, yeah. So position variation up and down is um, plus or minus a second. To crown towards the west, that's the left on the machine. We do have a little bit of deviation to see what that settles to. Okay, 42 seconds. Day, that's not ideal, so we're not looking at a, uh, the balance is not as nicely adjusted as it could be on other balances, but I guess it, um, I don't know, it has something to do with the design of it, plus 35, 30, settling, it's not too bad, that's uh, acceptable for such an old watch, I think. And if we do the uh, crown towards the east, also to the right, the differential is much lower. We're actually looking at um, pretty much the same timekeeping, probably about plus 10, plus 7, that's very good. Let's do crown north up. Gaining a bit of time again. Okay, let's do crown down south. That's actually very good. That is very good. So um, if you think dial up and crown down is pretty much what you're going to have on your wrist when you're walking around and looking at your watch or having it on the bench, the uh, time differential is. Um, the difference is quite uh, low. So overall, this is gonna keep very good time. Okay, here we're going to put the auto winding mechanism in place. I'm gonna start by putting the reverser wheels in. So we have two different ones. It's very important to notice. You have the one to the right, which has the um, connecting pinion on the other side. That goes on to the right. And you have the one with no connecting pinion on the other side that goes to the left. So first we have to turn the eccentric screw like so, so we can uh, fit it. I've put a drop of oil on these posts already. There we go. And then we turn the eccentric screw all the way around so that the cutoff piece comes here. That allows us to, that sec actually secures these two reverser wheels in place. Very nice jewel in the middle. That's where the surface of the oscillating weight will go. I'm also going to give that a drop of oil. Yeah. Put that in, like so. in place here. Allowing the oscillating weight to move freely. Next, a drop of oil on this pillar and this pillar here. And we'll put the intermediate winding wheels in place. such and 
we can secure that, those two wheels, with this lever that you move over like that. Very nice and easy water winding mechanism to put together. I'll put that to the side and uh, we can look at uh, putting the dial and hands on back onto the movement. Yeah, I think it's safe to say it's time with a new crystal as this one's um, disintegrated. So when it comes to the bezel, I have uh, tidied it up. I've put on a uh, layer of paint in the grooves and that just gives it that, uh, makes them pop out a bit more. Looks uh, much better. I'm also going to fit, I don't have one with date, but I'm going to fit a diver star crystal. It's going to come in here. That I'm going to use my trusty crystal fitting tool. There we go. And uh, yeah, that looks great. Got the original um, compound or whatever it is in the 12 o'clock section there. Um, but I'm just going to, um, yeah, this is uh, it's in pretty decent condition, so I'm going to leave it like that. So when it comes to this crystal growth stuff on the dial, or whatever it is, I uh, have decided I'm going to remove it, because even though it's a cool conversation starter, it does not look that great uh, when it's not micro uh, under a microscope. So when you just look at the uh, dial by itself, um, when it comes down to the crystal, it just looks like fuzz dust. So um, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can remove that with a bit of rodeo. It seems to be really loose, loose on there, and uh, we'll take it from there. Yep, that comes off nicely. We'll see if they'll grow any more. There might be some crystal collectors um, getting upset with me, but um, first of all, <laughs> I'm a watch guy. This looks a lot better in terms of um, the aesthetics of the watch. Maybe not such a cool story, but uh, in the end of the day, I want a nice looking watch. So, time to put the dial on. Now that we are happy with the way it looks, drop a little bit of oil on the minute um, clutch and then to engage with the hour wheel there and we can pop the dial on. So I've fitted the uh, dial in place, screwed it on and um, now we're going to get the date change. There we go, date change. So I'm going to do now is loosely fit the um, our hand close to where that uh, changed and then I'm going to adjust it from there. Such a snappy date change. It's um, good to get close and then I can uh, adjust it. There we go. It's a fantastic color on the compound here. Okay, that's not so far off. Go back. Okay, a little bit further ahead. Go there again. Yep, 
pretty much spot on. I'm happy with that. So I secure the hour hand. Of course, I need to clear the markers here. That markers can be a bit hard to align sometimes. We'll do our best. Looks like hands, I mean. Um, so, that's all. There we go. That's more like it few seconds off, but um, that's close enough. Now for the uh, second hand, make sure these uh, hands don't touch. Pretty good clearance. Something like that. They're pretty close. There we go, that's where we want it. Close, but no touching. Okay, that's us ready to put this uh, movement back into the case. We're going to start by uh, loosening the setting with the screw and um, taking the stem out again. Then I'm going to put it into the case. That's just a little bit of uh, silicone grease to help the rubber gasket and the crown to move freely. You may also notice I've secured the movement and the case ring. Great looking movement. I'm going to have a quick look under the microscope, make sure there's no fibers or anything on top of the gear train here before I fit the auto winding mechanism. Very good, that looked uh, that looked okay. There's a couple of fibers I removed. I'm gonna put a drop of red oil into this hole here. That's the guiding hole for the intermediate winding wheel, which comes out here. I just like to um, I guess I don't need to lubricate it, but uh, I do anyway. There we go. So we drop the auto winding mechanism on like so. Let's find it could be good to just manually wind the watch like that so it engages properly before I tighten the screws. There we go.
good, that's semi-secured. What an absolute stunning looking movement this is. Uh, the next thing to do is find a nice big fat uh, case bag gasket. So a little update, the, uh, there was a bit of wear in the oscillating weight and that was in the, um, in the, uh, I guess, it, yeah, the wear was here on the other part. I tried to tighten it, but I failed miserably, ruining the part. And uh, luckily I have a backup piece, which I'm now going to, which I'm now going to press into place. There we go. Now that should be uh, sorted. Right, now I got that uh, oscillating weight sorted. Um, no more slack, moving very freely. It's nice, so uh, happy about that. Now I can get it cased up again. As it's such good weather, I decided to go outside and we could get some natural sunlight on this movement so you can see how it looks. Um, next thing to do is get the case back back on. There you have it. Vila Veta. Veta, lifeguard. I don't know, these names can be confusing sometimes, but um, one could, could say this one came out very nice. Um, I think it's nice to be outside in the sunlight so you can really get a um, good impression of uh, the patina on the dial and how that. Um, looks both in the shadow and in direct sunlight it looks fantastic this is truly a one-of-a-kind watch and um, i don't know if i'm going to put this one up for sale it's uh it's so cool so the next thing to do is uh, find a cool strap for it and um, well i'm definitely going to wear it a bit test it and then we'll see where we go from there but um I've never seen one before. I've not seen this uh, bezel before. Very cool bezel, very cool medallion on the case back. Overall, great watch. So until next time, have a good one.